Hi guys, welcome to another interesting and exciting video where I will be sharing information and details about one of the important projects in which the Lagos State Government will embark on in 2023, which is the proposed Fort Milan Bridge project in Lagos, Nigeria. Before we proceed on this channel, I share information and visuals of different infrastructural projects taking place in Lagos and around Nigeria. If you are interested in such content, make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel. Like and turn on notification to get notified anytime a new video drops. Firstly, what's the Fort Mainland Bridge project about? And why is the Lagos State Government a subnational embarking on an ambitious project? The Fort Mainland Bridge is a proposed public private partnership transport infrastructure development, which includes the construction and operation of a greenfield toad road and bridge with a design speed of 120 km per hour including the development of adjacent real estates. The bridge is expected to become the second longest bridge in Africa after completion. The Fort Milan Bridge is a 2x4 lane carriage cross-sectional road with permission for a BRT lane and future road contraction. The Fort Milan Bridge will consist of the following features, three tow plazas, nine interchanges, a 4.5 km lagoon bridge, and an eco-friendly environment, amongst others. It is expected to span about 37 km, starting from Abraham Adesoya in Aja on the Etiosa Leki Ekpe corridor and traverse the northwest towards the lagoon shoreline of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway by Owutu Ishawa in Ikorudu. The Fort Milan Bridge aim is to relieve severe congestion on the existing Third Milan Bridge while opening new areas for future development. The idea of the Fort Milan Bridge was conceptualized by the government of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos State. Construction was planned to commence in 2017 and expected to be completed by 2019. But construction have not started as of December 2022, while a lot of works are still ongoing behind the scene and almost at the final stages before the groundbreaking ceremony for the proposed Fort Mainland Bridge. The ongoing regional road construction and the Lekki Ekpe Expressway road construction will also pave way for the Fort Mainland Bridge construction. These are being done to make the job easier when construction starts. The Fort Mainland Bridge project has gone through competitive bidding process. The request for proposal stage 1 and the request for proposal stage 2. The request for proposal stage 2 was issued to three shortlisted bidders, namely 1. Mota NGO, Nigeria and Africa, CCCC and CRBC Consortium. 2. CGGC, CGC Joint Ventures. 3. CCECC and CRCCIG Consortium An evaluation committee which comprises of representatives from the Lagos State Ministry of Works and the project advisors commenced the evaluation of the submitted request for proposal stage 2 documents and as at 29th of December 2022 the Lagos State Government, through the Office of Public-Private Partnership, announced 
the preferred bidder for the fourth mainland bridge project, which was CCECC CRCIG Consortium. Why Mota Angel, Nigerian African, CCCC, and CRBC Consortium will be the reserved bidder for the Fort Milan Bridge project. Initially, it was estimated that 2,000 properties will be demolished for the project, but a further review has put properties to be demolished at 800 as arrangements will be made for timely and adequate compensation of the properties to be demolished. The PPP arrangements will see the consortium tolling the bridge for 40 years. Groundbreaking and flag off for the project is expected to be done by first quarter of 2023 and the duration for the project is estimated to be 48 months, which is approximately 4 years at a cost of $2.5 billion. I want the, the Nigerian public, particularly Lagosians, to have faith and trust in this administration that we are committed to this, we are deliberate about it, and that what you are getting here will represent one of the first class engineering construction work that you can get. Um, so what does this bridge mean for Lagosians? I always say this is like the M25 of England. It would remove gridlocks that, you ex that we have all been experiencing, the level of serviceability that you have either on the third mainland bridge or the co bridge at everybody you see it it's bumper to bumper every day um, and people have asked for how long will this be the third mainland bridge was finished in 1990 that was 32 years ago how come it has taken us this long to come on the fourth mainland um, so this is coming after extensive route alignment and survey 16 to be precise so 16 route selections were carried out before we eventually arrived at this, that has minimal number of demolition that also fits into the resettlement action plan and then also signed off with the environmental um, impact assessment certified by the Federal Ministry of Environment. Um, yes, it traverses both Lagos and Ogun State boundary. Um, that is why we have seen a lot of stakeholder engagement on both sides. It's good that we have the Ogun, Ogun Lagos Ogun Border Development Commission, which has made the work a lot, lot more easier because everybody can see the opportunities that it presents for the two states. Um, so essentially it's a 37 kilometer long road. There is, a, there is a road component and there is a lagoon bridge component that is about four and a half kilometers. You have the option of real estate provisions along the side. It will also will cut across, it will take off from, from Ebermadesonia all the way over the lagoon, Badore, and then bust out at Sparklight on the Lagos um, Ibadan Expressway. The affected structures, we have taken time to rate them, so adequate compensation has been made. The estimated cost of construction is estimated to be about $2.5 billion. A lot of people have asked, why is it that we have not? For now, it looks like it's the FDIs that will work until when the consortium and then the bonds, the LDIs begin to come, we begin to have trust and confidence in ourselves that even our, our, our HNIs, our high net worth individuals and groups will begin to see um, infrastructure provision as, an, as a way of improving um, the lot in the, in the country. Um, Chinese, CCC, the group, the CCC consortium, they are not new to the Nigerian um, environment. They've done a number of projects here and in China. One of the things I always say is one of the most excellent bridges all over the world in difficult terrains have been done by the Chinese. What I tell people is the standards. This project allows for best of practice, engineering practice, and the team 
with the technical advisors, with the supervisory team, with the project managers, the technical managers, anything short of that best international best practice will not be accepted, will not be, will not be, um, anything short will not be accepted. So I want to reassure negotiations. This 37 kilometer long road and bridge will represent the best of engineering in terms of standard and in terms of finishing and in terms of quality. It will also have ultimately nine interchanges, six, but for the first start, six. Six will be built. Um, in addition to that, you would have some bus. So you have loops along the line where you will drop and will connect to other neighboring, neighboring uh, uh, towns. It will also provide an opportunity for connection to the Lagos Abuja Highway because presently we're working on the Akonwarepo. If once we're able to finish that road now, we can then do the next connecting gap. So what we're trying to do is create a connecting loop that you can have alternative that you can head on on the Lagos Abuja Highway. 